much are invasive species costing us? How does the Tasmanian devil affect other species' genetics? And how did the giant ape go extinct? What a wild week. Welcome to What a Wild Week, a weekly series where I summarise some of the biggest stories to come out of the natural world every week. Invasive species cost the US $120 billion every year. An invasive species, simply put, is an organism that is not originally from a specific area. These organisms, which are not native or indigenous, have the potential to cause quite the stir, environmentally and economically. But what makes something invasive? Well, it's sort of a three-step combination. First, easy adaptation to the new surroundings. Second, speedy reproduction like there's no tomorrow. And third, causing disruption by harming property, the economy, or most importantly, the flora and fauna. Invasive species around the world are causing a staggering $423 billion in losses every year, with the US bearing a significant burden at $120 billion annually. These intruders, introduced primarily through human activity, disrupt ecosystems, outcompete native species, and transmit diseases. Over 37,000 species have been introduced into new habitats, thanks to human activities such as travelling and transporting goods. Some of these introductions have been intentional, seen in the case of the European rabbit in Australia, brought over by English settler Thomas Austin, who bred them for game shooting in the 1800s. As the saying goes, at it like rabbits, indeed they were, breeding out of control. It is now illegal to own a rabbit in the state of Queensland due to their invasiveness. But some of these introductions can occur by accident. For example, a new species of spider which finds its way over on a banana. From mosquitoes decimating Hawaiian bird species to feral pigs causing havoc in the south of the US, the impact is undeniable. Let's take a look at five species causing concern across the US. Zebra mussels. Originally from Eurasian waters, These mussels cost the US $1 billion annually by clogging up water treatment plants. These hitchhikers likely arrived in ballast water, proving that even unintended introductions can have devastating consequences. Ballast water is used by ships for manoeuvring and stability, but it's also a major pathway for invasive marine organisms. The spotted lanternfly. This insect, first spotted in 2014, hitchhikes on various transportation modes, causing an estimated $324 million annually, mainly hitting the wine industry. Grapevines, trees and fruit crops are not safe from this invasive species. Ornamental plants. Ornamental plants like Japanese barberry and baby's breath might seem harmless because they're sold in plant shops and nurseries, but they're silently spreading outside of gardens, overtaking native plants. Early detection is key to minimise the harmful effects. The European starling. Introduced to the US in 1890, the European starling almost drove the eastern bluebird to extinction. Starlings not only compete for nesting sites, but they cause havoc in agriculture, costing an estimated $800 each year. Efforts to control them resulted in over a million casualties in the year 2021 alone. Feral pigs. Feral pigs are one of the most detrimental invasive species worldwide. With a presence in at least 35 US states, these pigs cost the US about $2.5 billion each year, destroying vegetation, impacting soil, and posing health risks by carrying various diseases. It's evident that invasive species pose a significant threat, not only in the US, but globally, and awareness and action are key in mitigating the impacts. Declining Tasmanian devil populations are causing genetic changes in other species. Tasmanian devil. No, not this guy, but the actual animal he's based on. The real Tasmanian devil may not spin in ridiculously fast circles like their animated pal, but they do have very powerful jaws, opening to 80 degrees. But these fierce predators are becoming more and more rare, which is having a pretty powerful impact on the rest of the food chain. The population decline of the iconic Tasmanian devil is not just a concern for its own survival, but is reshaping the fate of another local predator. 
the spotted-tailed quoll. An international team of evolutionary biologists and natural scientists have undertaken a study in the Tasmanian wilderness to try and find out why. The researchers embarked on a quest to understand the evolutionary impact that the devil's decline was having on the quolls. They did this by studying over 15 generations of Tasmanian devils. One of the main reasons for the Tasmanian devil numbers plummeting is due to the devil facial tumour disease, or DFTD for short. This devastating disease is a huge factor in the devil's decline and seems to be triggering a domino effect. Enter the spotted tailed quoll, a marsupial with a diet similar to the devil's, but they're much smaller in size. Devils and quolls have similar diets and are both active at night. While this may seem like major competition for the quolls, they generally avoid devils due to their greater size and aggressive nature. Out in the field, the researchers trapped 345 quoll specimens from 2004 to 2019. Tissue samples collected from the lower part of their ear became the key to unravelling the genetic mysteries. The genetic analysis revealed a fascinating tale. Quolls living in areas with higher levels of DFTD and consequently lower devil populations showed greater genetic similarity, whereas quolls in areas with lower levels of DFTD had greater genetic diversity. So what does this mean? Well, it appears the quolls are adapting to a changing world shaped by the challenges faced by the devils. When a top predator dwindles, the smaller predators usually take over due to less competition resulting in more resources. And this is exactly what scientists found with the quolls. The researchers identified 12 genetic variants linked to reductions in devil populations, including genes associated with movement and muscle development. So in areas with fewer devils, the genetic makeup of quolls was different. Some of these genes were linked with movement and muscle development, as well as genes linked to feeding behaviour. This is because when devils aren't there, quolls don't need to move around as much. They can almost take it easy knowing they rule the roost. But this lack of movement also means that quolls are less likely to encounter other populations of quolls, leading to a lack of genetic diversity. And a lack of genetic diversity usually has huge evolutionary consequences, which we just don't know enough about yet. Little is known generally about the effect declining predator populations can have on the evolutionary genetics of other species in the food web, and this study was one of the first to demonstrate it. This study highlights the importance of studying top predator populations as the knock-on effects consequently affect entire ecosystems. The extinction of the giant ape. Imagine seeing a three meter tall ape weighing a whopping 250 kilograms coming towards you. Yes, they exist, or at least they did over 200,000 years ago. I'm talking about the incredible Gigantopithecus blackie, 10 feet of orange hair and big teeth. These giants weren't just any apes, they were the largest primates to ever walk the earth. So what happened to these colossal creatures? A groundbreaking study in nature has the evidence. Our distant ancestors, Gigantopithecus blackie, or G. blackie for short, stood at the top of the primate kingdom in southern China. However, we now know they met their demise between 295,000 and 215,000 years ago leaving behind only fossilised teeth and jawbones. But the question remained, why did this creature vanish? A team of researchers from China, Australia and the US have the answer. The breakthrough came from a large-scale project covering 22 cave sites in southern China using various dating methods and environmental analyses. Robust dating techniques became the key to unlocking the secrets of the ape's extinction. Luminescence dating, uranium series and electron spin resonance unveiled the timeline, setting the stage for a deep dive into the environmental conditions leading to the giant ape's extinction. Luminescence dating works by measuring a light-sensitive signal that is found in the sediments containing the ape fossils. By direct dating the fossil remains, the scientists confirmed that the ape's age aligns with the luminescence sequence in the sediments where they were found. Teeth also provided a staggering insight into the behaviour of the species, indicating stress, food sources and repeated behaviours. 
The team's finding sort of rewrote the history books, revealing G. Blackie's demise to be much earlier than previously thought. Up until this point, G. Blackie thrived in rich and diverse forest habitats. But as environments changed, forest communities were disrupted, impacting the G. Blackie massively. G. Blackie's adaptable cousin, the orangutan, was able to adapt its behaviour and preferences in response. But the G. Blackie was not this savvy. G. Blackie's highly specialised diet led to decreased mobility, chronic stress and dwindling numbers. G. Blackie was the ultimate specialist, and ultimately this led to its demise. As we face the potential threat of a sixth mass extinction event, understanding the past becomes crucial for the future. Understanding why species go extinct could not be more vital. What lessons can we learn from the fate of G. Blackie? Learning the reasons for previously unresolved extinctions could potentially give us better understanding of primate resilience. So there you have it. Those were some of the wildest stories from the week. Hit the like button, click subscribe, and I'll see you next week to catch you up on all things wild.